program here at the Philippine International Convention Center. This program will run from 9 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon and we will be live we will be covered live by Radio TV Malacañang and simultaneously broadcasted at the official page Facebook page of the Maritime Industry Authority. This is the last leg of the MIDP formulation process whereby our stakeholders who joined with us for more than, more than a year will now be given the opportunity to see and comment on the draft MIDP. To formally start our program, may we invite the Planning and Policy Service for the opening prayer. May we request everybody to please stand up. Varied in faith we may be, we have but one God to whom we pray now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty and loving God, acknowledging that everything comes and proceeds from you, we humbly lift up to thee this momentous occasion and ask you to bless it. Lord, fill everyone present with your grace and wisdom and imbue in each one of us a sense of unity in purpose, filled with love for our country, the Philippines, and for the Filipino people. Father God, enlighten and guide each one of us to discern your will on what our roles and contributions will be as an agency, an organization, and individually in making the aspirations of our nation a reality through this formulated 10-year maritime industry development plan for our country's maritime industry. May you grant us the grace of inspiration and dedication to think and work together as one in pursuing and accomplishing our shared vision and plan towards a nationally integrated and globally competitive maritime industry. All this we pray in your mighty name. Amen. Let us remain standing for the singing of our national anthem. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Bayang magiliw, pebas ang silanganan, alam ng puso sa titip mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, tuyat ka lang magigil, sa Be seated. A pleasant morning to everyone and thank you so much for your effort, for the time that you allotted to become part of this external validation workshop. The Marina wishes to acknowledge its partners for their invaluable contribution in the entire MIDP formulation process and for attending today's external validation workshop. So as I recognize your organization, please stand and be recognized. We have partners from the Board of Investments. Let's give them a warm applause. From the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED. Thank you so much, sir. From the Department of Education. We also have partners from the Department of Foreign Affairs. Welcome, sir. From the Department of Transportation. We also have partners from the National Economic and Development Authority. Thank you so much. From the P-Shirt, we also have researchers from the P-Shirt. Thank you so much, ma'am. Welcome. 
We also have partners from the Department of Tourism. Welcome, sir. From the National Telecommunications Commission. From the Office of Transportation Security. From the Philippine Competition Commission. From the National Mapping and Resources Information Authority, or NAMRIA. Welcome, sir. From the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. From the Department of Budget and Management. From the Philippine Ports Authority, PPA. From the Office of Transportation Cooperative. From our Technical Panel for Maritime Education. They, welcome, sir. From Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or from TESDA. From Concerned Metro Manila Tugboat, Barge, and LCT Owners Association. Welcome, ma'am. From the Filipinos Ship Owners Association. Welcome, sir. From the Visayan Association of Ferry Boat and Coastwise Ship Owners Associations. Welcome, sir. Good morning. From the Philippine Inter-Island Shipping Association. From the Philippine Roro Operators Association. Good morning, sir. From the Philippine Liner Shipping Association. From the IMO Southeast Asian Region, Authority Josephine Marie Oranza. Welcome, ma'am. From the Shipyard Association of the Philippines. From the Boating Industry Association of the Philippines. Welcome, sirs. From the PSVOIA. Good morning, sir. From the Philippine Association of Maritime Institutions. Good morning, sir. From the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers. Good morning, sir. From the Women in Maritime Philippines. From the IFC World Bank. From PSAA, from the Master and Mates Association of the Philippines, from Transglobal Maritime Agency Incorporated, good morning ma'am, and from the Maritime Academy of Asia and the Pacific, Maap, good morning. And we also would like to recognize the President and CEO of the Primex, our consultant, Ms. Elvira C. Ablaza. Good morning, ma'am. And of course, our Marina OIC Vice Admiral, Narciso Vingson Jr. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. So for today, as we all know, all of you are very excited. We are excited as well on the side of Marina as we present to you the 10-year Maritime Industry Development Program or the MIDP that will guide our agency in the next 10 years from 2019 to 2028 as we lead the Philippines towards becoming a major maritime nation. So without further ado, let us welcome on stage the officer in charge of our dear agency. Let us welcome Vice Admiral Narciso Vingson Jr. as he provides us with an overview of our draft MIDP. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Senor Lat. We are pleased to welcome uh, our distinguished guests to the external validation workshop of uh, Maritime Industry Development Plan or MIDP. Allow me to present the Marina's initiative in building a nationally integrated and globally 
competitive Philippine maritime industry through uh, the MIDP. The formulation of uh, MIDP 2019 to 2028 is a participatory process enabling us to draw a comprehensive plan for its sustainable growth and development. This venture met its success with the cooperation of more than 2,000 key marine, uh, maritime stakeholders. Uh, during the previous administration, the marina laid out its 14-point agenda for 2018. The second item of the agenda is the completion of the Maritime Industry Development Plan. Officially launched in June 2017, the MIDP formulation process follows two phases. First is the sector assessment that encompasses the conduct of road mapping workshops, stakeholder analysis, problem analysis, objective analysis, and alternatives analysis based on a logical planning framework approach. The second is the participatory, participatory planning that includes sector goal and objective definition, priority programs identification, results framework development for each of the programs, and validation workshop as such that we are holding today. The entire process was guided by relevant national le legislations and plans, particularly the PD-474 of 1974, Ambition 2040, PDP 2017-2022, and SDG uh, 2030, and the international and regional commitments of the government to the maritime sector. Today, the maritime sector is a rapidly growing segment of the Philippine economy, which serves as the engine of growth for other industry, such as agriculture, manufacturing, construction, transport, education, and tourism, and recreation, and financial intermediation. It is classified into two, the sea-based sector encompassing the country's core capabilities in shipping and fishing operations, and the land-based sector covering our support capabilities in shipbuilding and ship repair, port management, maritime ancillary business, and maritime education and training, and maritime administration. Our maritime industry made notable contribution to the Philippine economy for the past two years. The Philippines is the leading source of seafarers globally, with over 400,000 seafarers working overseas. It marks a 28% increase in seafarer deployment compared to more than 340 seafarers deployed in 2010. We are also a major contributor to the economy through remittances of 21% percent growth in a five-year span. We boast a 61 increase in ship manufacturing from 2011, making us the fourth largest ship producer in the world. As a maritime nation, we continuously facilitate safe and reliable trade and travel with more than 70 million passengers transported by sea, 100 million metric tons of domestic and foreign cargoes and billions of dollars worth of transport services in imports and exports. Now let us discuss trends and opportunities that are important in anticipating the future demands of the industry. We have projected a world shortage of officers estimated at 92,000 in 2020 and 147,000 five years after. Projected increase in visitor arrivals via cruises estimated to reach more than 400,000 passengers by 2022. Prospect for further growth of domestic shipping and fishing will remain high, mainly due to the country's archipelagic conf configuration. Demand for shipping, cruise, tourism, shipbuilding is projected to increase due to the influence of global trends such as continuing population growth, and increasing urbanization, 
growing volume of trades, and other factors. Lastly, for coastal and inland waterways, transport system will intensify to improve alternative cost and energy efficient mode of transportation and extend roads distance to serve more than more in highly urbanized areas. Despite the growing economic contribution of the Philippine maritime industry and the positive trends, stakeholders felt the impact of globalization and technology advancement on the present and future operation of the industry. The problem three for the maritime industry is a product of problem analysis identifying the decline of competitiveness of the Philippine maritime industry as the industry's core problem. This is attributed to the major fa factors such as poor quality of sea transport system, low level of shipbuilding and ship repair productivity, an attractive Philippine ship registry, and decreasing quality of maritime officers. Ultimately, we acknowledge that this problem stem from one dynamic problem, a fragmented maritime administration. In the MIDP, we are centered in one goal, to accelerate the development of a nationally integrated and globally competitive maritime industry through education, innovation, technology, and sustainability. To be more particular, the MIDP aims to achieve the following objectives. Increase domestic production capacity of shipbuilding and ship repair. Upgrade maritime technologies and support localization of supply chain. Develop and expand shipping and maritime tourism routes and destinations. Continuously upgrade higher maritime education and training program consistent with STCW conventions. Develop implement and support best practices in maritime safety and security and strengthen interagency and multi-sectoral collaboration and public participation in MIDP implementation. Guided by this long goal, the MIDP is focused on increasing capacity, efficiency, safety and security of all Philippine registered sea vessels including shipyard and maritime ancillary services. It features eight priority programs to be implemented for the next 10 years that include the upgrade of domestic shipping in support to nautical highway program, development of shipping services for maritime tourism, development of coastal and inland waterways transport system, strengthening of safety standards of Philippine registered fishing vessels, Development of a global maritime hub, enhancement of maritime safety in the Philippines, modernization of maritime security in the Philippines, and the establishment of maritime innovation and knowledge center. The performance and result of the MIDP will be measured through this competitiveness matrix as an impact to the maritime industry's contribution to the total GDP should have increased by 100% from its baseline of 720 billion pesos. For our prospective outcomes, we are looking at a 50% increase in generated employment by the end of 2028. Volume and value of traded goods by a Philippine registered merchant fleet is also expected to increase. With an enhanced transport system, we shall observe an up upward trend in the total number of passengers transported. Regulatory burden shall be reduced from three days to one day average. The amount of remittances contributed by overseas seafarers shall increase by 5.5% by the year starting 2020. And lastly, the average of domestic transport time by sea shall be reduced to three hours. Given the premise, we shall now detail each of the priority programs of the MIDP, starting with the upgrade of domestic shipping in support to nautical highway development. This program aims to safely and efficiently carry passengers and cargoes by reducing travel time and maritime accidents 
throughout the country. By 2028, we are expecting 80% passenger satisfaction rate through better quality shipping services, as well as reduction in travel time and maritime accidents. The outcome we expect to observe is the increased number of modernized and technologically advanced vessels, development of new routes, and the expansion and improvement of roads and ports. The five major components of this program shall directly address the underlying causes of poor quality of sea transport system and identified major problem of maritime industry. This includes upgrading of vessels to address concern of aging fleet, conduct of mandatory shipboard training for deck and engine cadets to address the shortage of qualified crew, improvement and construction of ports and roads infrastructure, modernization of motor bankers nationwide, and upgrading of local shipyard and facilities to address the poor and inadequate facilities in the country. Correspond, corresponding lead and supporting agencies are identified for the smoother implementation of the projects. The next program is the development of shipping services for maritime tourism. As the National Cruise Tourism Development Strategy and Action Plan of the Department of Tourism sets out strategic action to promote the Philippines as a regional cruise center in Asia, Marina shall support this plan by developing shipping services for maritime tourism. By 2028, we anticipate for the increase in maritime tourism revenue by 50%, number of accidents to remain at zero, and the amount of remittances in dollars of foreign flag cruise ship personnel should increase by 273%. As an outcome, number of graded boats serving to tourist destination areas increased by 80%. Boat construction in local shipyard create new jobs, and the number of crew employed in foreign flag cruise ships shall double. The program shall develop cruise destination based on the priority areas of the OT plan. First is the turquoise triangle that goes through Manila and Subic Bay. Boracay, Iloil, and Romblon, Puerto Princesa, El Nido, and Coron. Other potential cruise destinations in various parts of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao are also identified. The program's major component include the establishment of Maritime Tourism Committee, design and safety standards for cruise ship construction and operation, Facilitating investment in maritime tourism, capacity building of cruise ship building manpower and cruise ship crew, and promotion of maritime tourism. We are counting on our interagency effort with these agencies as we work on the improvement of maritime tourism. The third program in the development of, is the development of coastal and inland waterways transport system or the CIWT. This program mainly aims to increase the efficiency, safety, and utility of transport system in the country by enhancing navigability and quality of coastal and inland waterways and the improve, improving connectivity within the inter-islands. By 2028, we are looking at an efficient, safe CIWT system that reduced time and cost of transport in urban and coastal areas by 30%, passenger satisfaction of 80%. As an outcome, we, we plan to up the number of passengers transported by 90%, increase volume and value of cargos transported by CIWT system by 80%, and, the, and generate almost 2 billion pesos in investment in CIWT ship and facility operation. The major component of the programs are waterways development and maintenance, port terminal construction and operation maintenance, CIWT boat building and operation and maintenance, CIWT information system establishment and operations. 
Accordingly, we trust in our collaboration with these agencies to meet our success in the CIWT system. The fourth program we aim to implement is the strengthening of safety standards in the Philippine registered fishing vessels. This program aims to increase the efficiency and safety of all Philippine registered fishing vessels through improve operational safety standards and increase fishing crew competency. By 2028, fishing vessels operation cost shall be reduced by 10%. Maritime incident involving fishing vessels reduced by 50%. As a result, operation of illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing practices should decrease by 10% per year, while fishing vessel registered with uh, FBSC shall increase by 10% per year. The major components of this program include the development and implementation of fishing vessel safety rules and regulations, capacity building of trainers, operators, and seafarers on safety in fishing vessel operations, promotion of safety design in fishing vessels, and dissemination of user-friendly fishing safety guide. This shall set a place through our cooperation with these agencies. Moving on, we have the development of Global Maritime Hub. This program aims to develop the Philippines as a central point for accumulation and distribution of cargoes for worldwide trade. By 2028, we aim to double the contribution of maritime industry to the global, to the total GDP. The outcome shall be the increase in industrial, in the industry's total revenue, volume of trade goods by a Philippine registered merchant fleet, and value of traded goods. Establish new ancillary businesses, generate new ancillary businesses investments, and lastly, to increase number of generated new maritime employment. The following project shall lead us to the, to the expected impact and outcomes. The first is the promotion of the Philippine flag registry. The development of transshipment and bunkering hub in Southeast Asia region. Upgrade and expansion of local shipyards. Establishment of an eco-industrial maritime park. And the establishment of a world maritime education and training institution. We have identified the corresponding agencies for the smooth implementation of this project. The next priority programs we have in is the enhancement of maritime safety. This program aims to develop and, in, and implement a comprehensive safety plan for all Philippine registered vessels that encompasses the fundamental elements of maritime safety. By 2028, average transport time by sea and maritime accidents should reduce and passenger satisfaction rating for safety-related services should be up by 50%. The program shall see success with the number of ships compliant with national and international safety standards have increased, as well as the number of new ships compliant with national and international safety standards. Technical manpower certified professional safety standard inspector should also increase by 80%. The major component of the program include the development and implementation of policies and guidelines on maritime safety, a legislation mandating Philippine registered ships to be compliant with ISC, and maritime safety strategy and action plan, and the information education communication plan. It shall also include the capacity building of maritime safety and maritime and marine environment protection standards and the establishment and operation database and the monitoring and evaluation system on maritime safety and marine environmental protection. Likewise, we depend on interagency effort for the success of this program. Complementary to the enhancement 
of safety and modernization of maritime security. This program aims to develop and implement a comprehensive security plan for all Philippine registered vessels, ports, and shipyards to prevent occurrence of maritime incidents caused by criminality and terrorism. By 2028, volume of value of traded commodities amount of investment in ports and shipping are foreseen to increase, as well as double the passengers feeling secure and comfortable with shipping services. Meanwhile, maritime incident caused by criminality and terrorism shall radically decrease. For this to work, we identified following major component, formulation and implementation of national ship and port facility security, security code, information education and communication enforcement, monitoring and evaluation and uh, emergency response and database establishment and management. For smooth implementation, we have identified our relevant partners below. The final priority program of MIDP is the establishment of Maritime Innovation and Knowledge Center. This program aims to improve the capacity of marina and relevant partners to innovate and operate modern technologies as well as to apply best practices in maritime affairs. By 2028, the number of satisfied stakeholders on policies, programs, and services shall increase, as well as the positive feedback and sound suggestions received from clients. As for outcome, number of data searches on government website related to maritime sector shall double, database shall be enhanced and integrated by the end of 2022, improve new products, services, and processes associated with this MIDP, develop and applied, and partnership and stakeholders strengthened. Key projects of the, of the establishment of the MIKC include the avid promotion of maritime industry, development of knowledge products and technology solutions, and strengthening the innovation uh, capacity of partners and this program will be spearheaded by Marina in cooperation with other national government agencies, maritime in industry associations, academic institution and the media. The program will be implemented nationwide covering Marina's central and regional offices and involving all local and international stakeholders. Marina will take the lead role in implementing the program. Other concerns, other concerned national government agencies and local government units, maritime organization associations, private sector, academia, and mid and the media will serve as co cooperating program partners. The total cost is estimated at around 94.6 billion pesos to finance the implementation of the eight pri priority programs in the next 10 years. 93% of this is expected to come from financing institution and the private sector in the form of direct investment. Only 6% will be sourced from the government. The MIDP will be implemented through the proposed implementation arrangement composed of a higher level interagency multi sectoral national policy and implementation coordination council supported by an interagency technical working group. The MNPICC will be chaired by the Secretary of Transportation and co chaired by the NEDA Director General. It shall consist of the department secretaries
Anyway, malapit na. <laughs> okay. The, the MIDP will be implemented through the proposed implementation arrangement composed of the higher level interagency and multi sectoral national policy and implementation coordination council, supported by an interagency technical working group. The MNPICC will be chaired by the Secretary of Transportation and co chaired by the NEDA Director General. It shall consist of the department secretaries and heads of the following government agencies, three maritime industry representatives, two academic and training institution representatives. All these developments and programs can only mean good and positive things for the Philippine maritime industry as we strive to reform, revitalize, and innovate for the future. The lesson of the past and the prospect of the future will be the wind that drive us onward, forward, and upward, guided by the standards of international convention. And with the support of the stakeholders and partners here today, we are optimistic that together we are set to sail towards a nationally integrated and globally competitive Philippine Maritime Industry. Maraming salamat at mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you so much for your comprehensive presentation of our draft. 10-year maritime industry development program. So at this moment, we will be giving you a 15-minute coffee break. So you may start this moment to uh, have an idea, thought, thoughts uh, sharing session with our technical working group and other uh, maritime stakeholders and organizations that we have here. And after 15 minutes, we will come back for our group discussion. So we, will, we can already give our comments and suggestions as to how we can improve our 10-year MIDP. Thank you so much. Much. While we're having our um, coffee, uh, our, our coffee break.